ऑडियो क्लियर ना ऑडियो क्लियर ओके ऑडियो इज क्लियर वी हैव अ पैरेलली रनिंग कंट्रोल सिस्टम वेयर देयर इज अ टीम सिटिंग इट इज कांस्टेंटली चेकिंग फॉर ऑडियो क्लैरिटी एंड वीडियो स्ट्रीमिंग क्लैरिटी एंड बोथ ऑफ देम आर रनिंग फाइन एंड इन स्पाइट ऑफ दिस इफ समबडी इज गेटिंग अ प्रॉब्लम इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ द लोकल सिस्टम प्रॉब्लम फाइन All right. So for this question, first cervical spinal nerve has how many cutaneous branches? Seven zero one zero eight three. If you have local problem, please correct it. All good. Thank you. <coughs> There are four options given. The correct answer is the first cervical spinal nerve has no cutaneous branches. And the option number two, that says four cutaneous branches, it is actually the right answer if the question is of cervical plexus. Fine. There are four cutaneous branches of cervical plexus. So, a four so the con connected concept here is the cervical plexus. Cervical plexus has two types of branches: cutaneous branches and muscular branches. Fine. There are four cutaneous branches: lesser occipital nerve, greater occipital nerve, transverse cervical nerve, and supraglottis nerve. And the muscular branches are three. One is a very well-known structure, anta cervicalis. It's a loop that is formed. From the nerve emerging from C1 to C3, and then they supply a lot of muscles in the area. Then there is splenic nerve, supplies the diaphragm, also part of pericardium, and there are segmental branches. That is, spinal segment C1 to C4, and they inner they innervate the scalene muscles, and they will. Scalene muscles. <coughs> so, answer of the question is no cutaneous branches because we are talking only about C1. And if you see cervical plexus, and if you look at the cutaneous branches on this slide, nowhere in the cutaneous four cutaneous branches we have C1 written. Find C1 you will not find in any of the cutaneous branches. Whereas you will find C1 in a lot of muscular branches. That's why cervical spinal nerve, the first cervical spinal nerve, has no cutaneous branches. All its branches are muscular and they supply different muscles in the neck, in the cervical region. That's why the answer is four, no cutaneous branches. Clear? <coughs> Is it clear? How to look at it? So whenever you look at the cervical spinal nerve, you see whether the question is about cutaneous branches or the muscular branch. And the rule is, C1 has no cutaneous branches. Cervical plexus forms four cutaneous branches, but there is no contribution from C1 in any of those. All its contribution goes to the muscular branches. All right. The next one, the superficial fascia over the posterior triangle contains all of the following, except also supraclavicular, greater auricular, greater auricular, transverse, cutaneous, and lateral auricular, latissima, internal jugular vein, unnamed arteries derived from occipital, transverse, cervical, and supraclavicular artery. We are talking about the superficial fascia overlying the posterior triangle.
The answer is internal nuclear waste. A lot of people have answered IJB. That is the right answer. Now, again, post time only, we are talking about the supervision pressure. Now we go to the floor of it. So, floor of post triangle is formed by three vertical layer of deep cervical fascia, which covers all the following muscles except what is there is a posterior triangle which has an overlying skin, superficial skin, and then there is a floor. This floor is formed by three vertical layer of deep cervical fascia. This three vertical layer of deep cervical fascia covers a lot of muscles which are below that. Which are those muscles? Calinus entria, plenius capitis. Plenius capitis has already come in the reference of French lecture 1, which we uh, translate into English as head bandage. Plenius means bandage. Levitus capillae, calinus medius. Four options. Calinus medius. Somebody has answered calinus anterior. Two people have answered calinus anterior. Many have answered calinus medius capital. <coughs> the answer is calinus anterior. The pre vertebral layer of deep cervical tissue that forms the floor of prostate triangle covers linear capitis, levitus capillae, calinus medius, but it does not cover calinus anterior. <coughs> Fine. Next, the proprioception from sternocleidum asteroid is from spinal accessory nerve, lateral pectoral nerve, musculoskeletal nerve, of the ventral gravi from C2 and C3. This is about sternal theater asteroid. Proprioception, not the motor supply. Got it? Many people have answered ventral grammar of C2 and C3. You should know this basic. <coughs> Fine. This is given in last anatomy. Regional and applied anatomy, one of the very popular books. Go to 9th edition, open page number 8 and 635. Fine. There you can read it. Two rules says. It basically talks about those cranial nerves which do not have or rather those nerves which do not have proprioception. So cranial nerves 3, 4, 6, 7 have no sensory fibers, no proprioception. So the actual proprioception comes from fifth nerve. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 block the center 5. So that means proprioception to the next two nerves and the previous two nerves. Fine. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Center is 5. Okay. That 5, right abdominal nerve provides sensory proprioception to next two. That is 6 and 7 and the previous two that is 3 and 4. This is what you should remember. <coughs> so proprioception from ocular and facial muscles by local branches of fifth nerve and then muscles of facial expression supplied by facial nerve here also the proprioception is by cutaneous nerve or cutaneous branches of trigeminal supplying the overlying skin whether it is 3, 4 or 6, 7 proprioception is from the central that is number 5 trigeminal this is one group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then you go to the second group, that is 11th and 12th, final accessory and hypoglossal. Again here, there is no sensory and proprioception. <coughs> so 
these nerves supply sternum asteroid and trapezius. So, although they provide motor supply, there is no proprioception or sensory. So, here the proprioception is from C2, C3 for sternum asteroid and C3, C4 for trapezius. Fine? So, C3 is common. One thing you understand, whether it is Thermocleidum asteroid or trapezius, C3 is common. C3 collaborates with C2, C3 also collaborates with C4. How we should remember is, Thermocleidum asteroid comes anteriorly in the neck. So, C3 collaborates with C2, anterior only C2, number comes first. For trapezius, which is on the back side, it collaborates with C4. So C2, C3, C4, this way you can remember. Although the numbers are vertically down, C2, C3, C4, but here for our convenience, we are remembering it this way. Thermocleidum asteroid and trapezius. Although the motor supply is on final accessory, there is no proprioception. It is by C2, C3, C4. How? Thermocleidum asteroid is C2 and C3, trapezius is C4 and C3. So, anthroposterior reaction we have told you C2, C3, C4. This is how you should remember. And tongue muscles, motor supply is exclusively by hypoglossal, but the proprioception is from the lingual branch of trigonal. This is a slide of extreme importance. If you remember this, a lot of anatomy you will have covered. Understood? All those who face video, video problem, please directly call 9223-234567 directly. There is no need to type here. Understood the concept? Are you getting a hang of anatomy, how it is to be studied, how things are to be visualized? And understood. So my advice is anything other than this also, when you study, try to utilize the techniques I am giving you today. It can make the overall process of learning more enjoyable. Fine? So the answer is mental ray of C2 and C3. And because we are talking of sternocleidum asteroid muscle, understand that final accessory nerve provides the most supply to sternocleidum asteroid and it passes through the muscle. Fine? So C2, C3 for sternocleidum asteroid and when it comes to the phase here, it is C3 and C4. Torticolis. Torticolis occurs due to paralysis of which muscle? Trapezius, supracubular, calenus, anterior, calenus, medium. Thank you so much. I should also fight. Torticolis or Y neck is a deformity in which the head is bent to one side and the chin points to the other side. This is the result of spasm or contracture of the muscle supplied by the spinal accessory nerve. Spine, the spinal accessory supplies two muscles, the sternocleidum asteroid and occasion. We have been studying these two muscles only. We had previous questions also. So we are covering a lot of posterior triangle, posterior muscles and neck muscles. So the answer here is either of the options. A question may come with sternocleidum asteroid as the option, in which case you should go for that. 
Here this Sotegius, so we are going for this. The question may have Sotegius and Sotegius and Sotegius let me go, let me go for that. Fine. And clearly, cavernous sinus is related to optic tract, optic chiasma, olfactory tract, hypophysis cerebrae, and sphenoidal layer sinus, superior orbital fissure and the effects of the orbit, effects of petrous temporal bone, and the subtherapy of his brain. Show later. People are watching this slide now. But we cannot go back. Let them study the question. All right. Three things you should know about cavernous sinus thrombosis. Thromboplebitis. Thromboplebitis of cavernous sinus. Thromboplebitis leading to cavernous sinus thrombosis. How does it occur? The thromboplebitis that arises from the from a furuncle of upper lip or the nose can spread via ophthalmic vein to the cavernous sinus. This leads to cavernous sinus thrombosis. Now cavernous sinus thrombosis is a type of dural sinus thrombosis. Okay? The main heading is dural sinus thrombosis. There are three types of dural sinus thrombosis. First one is cavernous sinus thrombosis. It is the commonest. It is commonest because the facial vein drain into the sinus, cavernous sinus. The microorganism responsible for the cavernous sinus thrombosis is the Phalacopter aureus. The second type of dural sinus thrombosis is lateral sinus thrombosis. And the third type of dural sinus thrombosis is superior sagittal sinus thrombosis. Okay? Superior sagittal. The culture I told you, the sinus I told you, that forms one of the thrombo types of dural sinus thrombosis. But the commonest one remains the cavernous sinus thrombosis. The microorganism involved here is Sotelococcus aureus. Two more terms, ophthalmoparesis and ophthalmoplegia. Both of them mean the same. They refer to weakness or paralysis. Paralysis is plegia, weakness is paresis of one or more extraocular muscles which are responsible for eye movement. Okay? So this is a physical finding that you get in certain neurologic illnesses. This is the clinical significance part. Now anteriorly, cavernous sinus, sinus, cavernous sinus is related to superior orbital fissure and the effects of orbit. Option number three, that is superior orbital fissure and the effects of orbit. Coming to one more muscle, action of rectus capitis posterior. Rectus capitis posterior major muscle, when it acts alone, what does it do? Turns the chin to the same side, extends the head, <coughs> flexes the head laterally or flexes the head medially. Yes, 
thrombocytic of no spread to via deep patient going to cavernous sinus yes it can spread and the commonest cause that they that they say is the furuncle inside the nose if it is flux if the nose here is flux that causes furuncle that is drained without antibiotic coverage that can lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis fine Rectus capsis, the posterior major muscle, it's a posterior muscle, and it originates from the spine of axis, <coughs> atlantic axial joint, axis, all the vertebrae are there. So from the spine of axis, this posterior muscle originates, and head extends only when bilateral muscles act. <coughs> When both the muscles act together, the head is extended. Otherwise, if only one muscle, muscle acts, it only turns the chin to the same side. It only turns the chin to the same side. That is, rectus capsis posterior major muscle. Understood? So people who answer extend extend head, they are partially correct because that answer is correct when bilateral muscles work. Here the question was when it acts alone. That is only one side of one side muscle acts. Then what is the action? Symptoms of Cora Espina syndrome include classic paraplegia, cradle anesthesia, sphincter disturbances, all of the above. Cordae spina syndrome. Any of you are correct? Answer is.